So I wanted to um, go over a more refined um, disc, or not disc, uh, surface grinding wheel balancing setup that I have. I did a video of this a little while back. <clears throat> it wasn't as, um, it, very similar setup to this, but I've got it more refined now so that um, I can much better balance the wheels um, to get a nicer surface finish. Um, it wasn't all that great before. Uh, but now it's uh, it's really quite nice and um, in one of my previous videos uh, I was doing some surface grinding I think of some parallels and I, I've uh, I showed how nice of a finish I was able to get on my inexpensive uh, grizzly uh, well I shouldn't say inexpensive but Chinese um, small Chinese uh, surface grinder so this is the setup right here um, I have a small granite plate that is uh, leveled and I use some very good levels. Uh, I'll show them in the uh, description. I'll just uh, post some uh, stills of the levels that I use. I have five different levels. You only need uh, one good level. But I, when I do this setup, I also double check the calibration of uh, my other levels. It's a good time to do it. <clears throat> so these are uh, so this granite surface plate is perfectly level uh, right now, according to the um, uh, to the specification of the levels themselves. I think the best one I have is a uh, Steric Master 12 inch uh, level. And um, then after that what I do is I check the uh, level of the um, 246 blocks uh, after that. And then what I've done here as well too is I have these uh, ground rods. Um, and uh, these are they're precision uh, ground rods but they're, they're not meant for this application. They're meant for um, so this is a, I think the length of this thing is an 8 inch, yeah it's an 8 inch. So it's a, it's a precision 8 inch rod for, for another application for measuring. But they're also really good to sit up here as rails um, so that they don't float around. And what I've, what I've done is I, I've taken all these stands, put them on a rail, and I put them on the surface grinder and ground them so that um, the rails are also all uh, level and parallel to, to everything else because if any one of these uh, stack cups is off a little bit it will throw off the whole balancing thing. So uh, it is very very level uh, and parallel that I've checked and uh, the next uh, stage right now is to go through the process of what I would do with a brand new wheel. So this is a, a Norton um, oh, I wish I didn't cover the, uh, the label there, but it's a silicon carbide uh, wheel. Um, I think it's called N39, uh, something along those lines. And I'm going to be using this wheel to try <laughs> to do something that I don't, didn't think was possible, but that is to surface grind aluminum. Um, I got this idea from Robin Renzetti. He, uh, he talks about that, uh, somewhere. And um, so this is the wheel. I'm going to give it a try. The only thing I don't have is coolant. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out some way, if at all possible, to cool while I, um, while I service grind some aluminum. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, in this video, I'm just going to go over uh, the first steps that you do to balance a wheel. Now, the first step that you've got to go through is um, you need to true the wheel up because from the factory, they do not come, they do not come round. And I can demonstrate this. Uh, here, let me put the camera on the tripod and I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> there we go, I'll zoom in a bit. So, I can demonstrate that by turning this by hand and feeding in, and you'll hear it go ching, 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 ching. There we go. So clearly they're not um, they're not round from the factory. So you want to do this, and this is a step I've missed before. I didn't think of doing before, and uh, um, you know I was paying a little more attention to some some of the pros who do this. Uh, that yes, you have to you have to true your wheel up because if you don't, you're going to be balancing a wheel that's actually out of true, and that's going to affect the balance. So that when you true it up after, it won't be balanced anymore. So Important first step is to um, to uh, true up the wheel, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off with the hub. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to take the uh, hub off of the wheel. It's going to stay permanently together. I'm going to move that over to the uh, to the balancing 
balancing station. So first I'm going to get the cover on here. So that did it. Now we'll move on to the balancing station. So that's the tool there that I made um, for taking that nut off right there. Nice to have a, a lathe and a mill to do these kind of things. And if the wheel doesn't come off easily enough by hand, you give it a little tap, but I'm telling you, just a tiny, tiny... There we go. And that takes it off. Okay. So you'll see on this uh, grinding wheel, uh, there's three little weights that you can distribute around uh, to set your balancing. A lot of grinding wheels will have um, this kind of setup uh, or something similar that allows you to move weights along. Sure, all the tapers are clean. Going to put the nut on there. No one needs to be snugged up. It doesn't have to be cranked on. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll get a screwdriver ready and Get these guys loose to start. And then set this up on here and see what happens. There you go, it's already uh, it's already turning quite a lot, so it's really out of balance. I'm just gonna make sure everything's lined up here nice. Yep, it's all good. Maybe zoom out here a bit. There we go. <coughs> So this looks like the high spot or the light, the light spot, the light area weight. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the weights uh, sort of up in this direction right here to counterbalance that uh, because it's heavy, heavy at the bottom. If you go over, then you can just come back and redo it. It goes pretty quickly. It goes quickly when you have a nice setup like this that does not have a lot of resistance. So that's a pretty good sign. I just dropped that in there and it didn't move. So um, we're going to try what happens like that. I can tell we're pretty close, but uh, we want to get things as perfect as possible. There we go. So went a little bit too far, but not much. But... Uh, I want to give you an idea of what it looks like when when it's on the uh, jig or any jig. What you're expecting is no movement at all when you put it down or, or very little. So it's very good there. Um, and I should mark, <coughs> should give myself a reference mark. It doesn't matter where it is, just uh, so I know where I'm working from. We'll go 90 degrees to that and see what happens. It's not moving, so I think this might be it. That might have just taken a couple of tries, I think. Let's try that, 180 degrees apart. Very good. Um, straight down, like so. Yeah, guys, this, this is it. I got lucky this time around. Sometimes it's six, seven, or eight times, but I just got it in two, in two times. And back up at the top here again, let's see. Yeah, that, that's basically as good as it gets, at least for this setup. Um, there, may, there are better jigs out there, I'm sure, that will do this uh, a little better, but I think because of the fact it's a rail on rail, there's very, very little resistance. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with that. So that's what it should look like as far as uh, balancing the wheel. And from here on end, uh, I just will take it off, remount it on the uh, grinder, and um, uh, give it a